Creating projects here at Serpa Design may appear optimal, but that's rarely the case. I've put such an emphasis on work and caring for the animals that organization usually became an afterthought. Thus, I'm always losing what I need and unnecessarily cleaning up after myself. I'm exhausted by this cycle that began seven years ago. Early on, I worked in the middle of my parents' basement. Then my wife and I moved to our first home, where I built the previous animal room. In both instances, I filmed from the middle of a basement, near the laundry room without designated places for the materials I use, which usually end up on the floor. That's not ideal, especially after a long period of time. Things began changing last year when we moved to our current home. Here I set the foundation for a proper, nature design studio workshop in the animal room. I didn't get very far though. I installed a wooden accent wall, put track lighting overhead, and got an adjustable standing desk. I filmed here a few times since, but this was not what I needed. The organization and mess issue didn't change, and the compound effect it was having on my life was leading to burnout. That's why in the past two months, I finally made a concerted effort toward completing this area. Unfortunately, that began with the work I've already done, the accent wall. I wanted this unique feature to set the studio apart from the rest of the room, but I wasn't pleased with how it turned out. The stain was much darker and yellower than anticipated. It also created challenges while filming because of the white balance. Luckily, the solution was as simple as flipping the boards around. I did this in sections to ensure it all fit as before. I think you'll agree that the natural color is a lot more suitable. Of course, it also eliminates the white balance issue I was having. To retain this look and protect the boards, I applied three coats of matte water-based polyurethane instead. The primary issue I've had with all of this is a lack of usable storage. Cabinets seemed like the obvious move here, but I had to build them all custom for the space. I cut three quarter inch thick plywood down to start. I had to account for the molding in the room on these pieces to ensure they fit tightly against the walls. I also chopped up 2x4s and created pocket holes that I'll use to connect everything together. These won't just be regular cabinets though. This is meant to house all of my hardscape. Including drawer baskets seemed like the best move. Installing these was a somewhat tedious process, but taking the time to do it right was essential. If the tracks didn't align, the whole thing would have been a waste. As you can imagine, it was really satisfying to add the drawers for the test fit. It looked incredible as well. However, I had to remove everything to get it all painted up. I went with black for a sophisticated look that will differentiate the space from the rest of the room. After the paint dried, I moved this into the animal room and centered it on the accent wall. I proceeded to add pocket holes along the top board, which I used to lock it to the studs within the wall. I then reinstalled the drawer tracks and added the baskets. It looked awesome, but I still had to build two more cabinets. I followed a similar design as before, but these would include shelves instead of drawers. Here you can get a look at the internal frames that support the plywood shelves. Of course I painted them like before, and once in place I secured them to the studs and the first cabinet. A cabinet wouldn't be complete without countertops, and to keep it cheap I went with 2x10s. I ripped them down to suitable widths before sending them through the planer for consistency. I sanded them as well for a proper finish. Back in the room I got the laser level set up to ensure everything was consistent across the entire counter, including these ledger boards that I installed in the void space. I did a test fit to ensure everything was sized correctly, and proceeded to add holes on the ends for the ledger board link up. I constantly checked the level throughout this process, and shimmed where necessary. Something else I should mention is that the countertop boards are connected together as panels from underneath. You can see what I mean here on the bottom of the largest section. Additionally, I fastened it all to the cabinets themselves. Between steps, I added these strips in the corner. They'll come into play shortly. In the meantime, I taped everything off and got to work staining the counter. This water-based stain is the same color I used for my tank stands. Although I wanted the space to be unique, I felt that some cohesion would create the best results. After applying two coats, I brushed on satin polyurethane. This will help preserve the material better against wear when compared to the matte finish on the accent wall. Additionally, I installed a backsplash above the countertop for a more dynamic aesthetic. I added those strips from earlier to account for these boards and easily create a recessed area for strip lighting. Lighting that's fully adjustable and adds great ambiance to the space. 
From here it was all about the details. I set up the laser level on the left wall, accounted for various measurements, marked accordingly, and installed two metal pegboards. I've been obsessed with pegboards since I was a kid, and they're a great way to stay organized while having quick access to materials. On the opposite side, I accounted for floating glass shelves. This area is intended to be more for display, and I felt glass creates good contrast. I installed the hardware directly into the studs to ensure the shelves remain on the wall. Below this, I accounted for one of my favorite features of all, magnetic strips. I modified them with cork to hide the yellow, and locked them into the studs. This is an awesome and effective way to display and organize tools I lose often. Something I didn't mention before is that these complement mesh baskets from IKEA aren't designed to hold the weight of stones. As you can see, they flex and bow significantly just from me pressing on them. My solution was to zip tie segments of threaded rods in a crossing formation with the mesh sandwiched between. It does still move, but the issue would be if the mesh sagged in the middle. This reinforcement allowed the drawers to support well over 100 pounds of stones each. And although I likely wouldn't need them for the driftwood drawers, I added them anyway. Another functional feature that I thought would add to the space was a hanging basket for botanicals. I use them often and they're beautiful on their own. I figured why not display them prior to use, giving them extra life and creating something unique in the process. I was tired of seeing this table as well. I wanted to cover it months ago, but the material wasn't large enough. The best and cheapest option I could find was actually a bike floor mat. I secured it to the underside of the table with staples and screws. Unfortunately, the cabinets removed my ability to use the outlets behind them. I decided to drill holes through the front to install cord grommets to retain the functionality of the space. Furthermore, I drilled holes in the top of the counter itself to run cords through and display select projects. I finished the cabinetry as well, with trim on the top to hide the shims, and cord around along the bottom to finalize the look. And no nature design studio would be complete without a scape dojo, right? I have a lot of rough cut cedar boards left over from the renovations in the office, which were perfect for the job. I sent them through the planer to quickly even things out. Then I cut them up and sanded them down to finish the look. Rather than stain the pieces, I decided to use the Shosugi Bond technique of burning wood to make it a little more special. There are various levels to this, but lately I've been burning the wood to where it's completely charred, with no visible grain remaining. From there I sand it down to remove the top layer of loose char and expose some of the grain underneath. The result is reminiscent of stained wood, but there's something unique about it, wouldn't you agree? After prepping the wood, I drilled countersink holes on the inside to discreetly attach them. I then dropped a piece of plywood in the middle, which I secured in the same way. Although Shosugi Bon itself protects the wood, I sealed the dojo with polyurethane for good measure. Additionally, I added a bead of silicone along the inside to ensure sand doesn't escape. It might sound silly, but even at this point, I was starting to see the fruits of my labor because I knew exactly where the brush was. Near this was a great spot for this massive piece of Seiryu stone. All of that came together well, but I have more up my sleeve for storage organization. One of which includes these stackable storage bins. I locked them onto a board and installed drawer tracks on the bottom and in one of the cabinets. I thought these were a cool option for tools and other materials I don't want on display. On the shelves below this, I added bins to house various materials I often use that I'd like in dedicated spots like epoxy and wires for example. And you know I had to take it to the label maker and make it official. Another highlight are these large ones for silicone and scrap building materials. On the other side I have a small organizer for specialty items like airline connectors. To its right are trays for miscellaneous materials that I need quick access to. I also have the terrarium toolbox which may not be as useful anymore, but I'm sure I could find some purpose for it. Finally I have small trash cans for raw materials like sphagnum moss. Elsewhere I added a few embellishments from a water jug to a proper trash can, a dust pan and brush, and various details throughout. A proper nature design studio. It's something I've imagined for so long now and to see it finally come to fruition like this is so surreal. Pretty much since whenever I started the channel, I always wanted a dedicated spot to where I could build in peace, know where everything is, and have it look cool in the process. 
because you got to know whenever I designed this, of course, I had the functionality of it all first and foremost in my mind, but I wanted it to look cool as well. Of course, it fits in perfectly with the rest of the animal room, but having features like the accent wall and the backlighting, it just sets it over the top. I also felt that showcasing the tools of the trade like the tweezers and scissors in a meaningful way was a really cool addition to have. Additionally, I wanted to include a lot of materials that inspire me and thus inspire the creative process. I have this giant piece of Seiryu stone for example, all of the botanicals, that slab of petrified wood, a chunk of coal, and of course various projects. Furthermore, I have a really cool project planned for the back of the wall itself. I would have liked to have had it done for this phase of the process, but quite honestly, there's more that I have to do in here anyway, like add things to the shelves, put a few things on the walls back here, and just different things around, so I figured it was fine to not have that done as well. But it's going to be a really cool and extensive project, so it kind of makes sense to have it in its own video anyway, and I cannot wait to share you what I have planned for that. I'm feeling even more inspired to create right now than usual. And I know it's a dumb problem that I created for myself, the mess and disorganization that I discussed earlier, but I can't understate how much of a hindrance it's been on my creative process. And I know that it's no secret how passionate I am about what I do, but as I'm sure you can imagine, constantly searching for things that you need inevitably takes a little bit of wind out of your sails. Take those tweezers for example, I still don't know where they are. Anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is that I feel this is going to make a huge positive impact on my content creation cycle, and I cannot wait to share with you all of the projects I'm going to make for this space. Anyway, thank you so much for supporting me all of these years and making something like this possible, and I can't wait to share with you what's next. Take care and peace.